you, Rory. Thank you, Rory. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Motor Steam Metrics Podcast here at TigersMLReports.com. I'm Rohel Lucas, you me is Chris Brown and Uper, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, as we're a proud partner of the Believe Network, and we are live on Facebook, live for the first time on the Tiger Minor League Report side. Just wanted to kind of experiment with that. We've never done that on Facebook Live. I've always had some really mixed bag results with Facebook Live because they have weird copyright things, so hmm. we'll see how it goes, and eventually maybe Facebook will kick us off. Who knows? Not really sure. <laughs> but um, also check us out on the Tiger Miley Report podcast. We did on Monday night with uh, Brandon Day. I had uh, quite a bit of a quite a bit of rant there. I don't regret. I I thought about it after a couple of days. Uh, you per just as a heads up, I had a few choice words for uh, Pat Caputo and his <laughs> awful take on Mac, Max Clark, and I don't regret it. Not one bit. I don't regret it. Too I know. Too I know. When it comes to that, you were not overwhelmed. You weren't overwhelmed by the moment. I'm sure you came through. Oh no, I was. I was. I was even keel, and I didn't swear at all. No, 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 not not, not one bit. I just don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm at that point where I'm just gonna say whatever is on my mind. Screw it. Like it just. Well, you know, whatever he got, he deserves. That was one of the dumbest things ever. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I'm a 19 year old kid. Anyway. All right. So plenty to get to as the Tigers lost three out of four at Texas, but it was a very good series. I don't, we try not to be, oh, you know, that was a great morale victory because we played against the World Series champs really well. But this is a team that, I mean, Texas is good. We we, we talked about this last podcast. Kenta Maeda, not so good. We'll talk about that a little bit. Highway Bias getting off the shine a little bit and telling people basically he was able to, to hit fastballs and it was able to, he had a good series overall. Mm-hmm. And so people were asking where they can get this rant. I'll send it to you here in the chat in just a second. But overall, you per, well, what was your first thoughts of the series? Yeah, you kind of uh, started to touch on it. It was obviously disappointing to drop three out of four. Uh, I was hoping for a split against a team that well. Um, they didn't get it. They came close. Obviously, they played some sloppy baseball at times and a little bit sloppier defense than we've seen so far. And that's something that needs to get nipped in the bud quickly. But, you know, stuff happens. I mean, things come in in waves, and they just had some really unfortunate moments in the field this week. Um, The offense showed a little life. Um, You know, they rallied from two big deficits today. Uh, Even the game they, you know, they they lost by scoring four runs. They won a game with four runs. So at least they're getting to four. (laughs) We shouldn't have to celebrate that, but the way this offense was was. Uh, doing you know four runs is pretty good so it was a fun week just a little disappointing at the end yeah you know i i came away with with um feeling like it was a, a real missed opportunity i mean the rangers are the defending champs they're a very good team but they were they were down two key bats and their rotation's a bit of a mess right now i mean we got how many innings did we get from jose urania this week um yeah. yeah more more so than in in he was in a tiger uniform i felt like yeah and and um yeah, you know, they get a rookie starter today who's uh, obviously he's a high draft pick, but things haven't gone great for him since he got drafted. And they were, you know, uh, he was very hittable. Uh, and they just, you know, they, they, I chalk up the Monday's game to, to really just bad cluster luck. I think they hit into three double plays. The top of the order got on base nine times and they just couldn't get a hit from somebody down the order. And they hit into some bad luck. Pitching was very strong in that game. You only give it one run and pitching remained strong. Uh, game two and, uh, and, Scoople, but the last two games they really blew it with their defense. Those are those are two winnable games, and their defense gave it away. And it's it's frustrating because that that could have been could have been two two, could have been three one series in, in the Tigers' favor. And especially this is a team that's a top three in defense in I believe the American League or all of baseball. And so there was a couple plays today too where I mean the special was and throw after he had that weird throw to second base that was also kind of just. There was a couple times where it was just I, I they were trying to get fault Baez, and I thought AJ Hinge's quote about Baez's play was the, the one where he missed the quote unquote missed the tag. I thought he made a good play there, and that was a good heads up move there. But was it uh, was it Garcia who, or was it who's a who's a runner? 
that was um, running the on Dr. that play. Dr. Ron Durchella, was that Duran? Yeah. Ezekiel Duran, maybe? I don't I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah. I, I, I didn't understand why Urshela, he didn't put the brakes on. If, and he kind of kept yeah. moving. Uh, and I didn't, if he had just stopped or attempted to stop, he would have slowed down enough. He would have gotten that tag. But it's almost like he ran past the runner a little bit when he did that back swipe. Tavares, thank you. Yeah, Leo Tavares, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. John H. Smith. <laughs> You know that's uh, was Josh Smith, right? Josh Smith is the yeah. uh, the player on the Rangers who I uh, the Tigers once upon a time drafted him before he went off to LSU. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, it's a bloop. But uh, no, I like what Deadly Ninja B said. The margin of error is too thin for defensive mistakes, and he's absolutely correct because yeah. the offense, the, it, the offensive explosion this week was nice to see. Kerry Carpenter continuing to level up in terms of that. I mean. That center, that that ball to center field today on that triple. Whether I don't know what happened with Tavares there. I mean, but then again, that ball would have been out at other parks too as well. That would have been another home run somewhere else. But still, Carpenter's been hitting the ball very extremely well. Mm-hmm. Keith had a nice opposite field single today. He had two hits on the game today. A couple of takeaways. Parker Meadows had a, his first home run of the season on a 92 mile an hour four seamer, which was important because he's been missing on those fastballs. I mean, there are a couple of silver lines you can take from from this, but there, there was, as Chris said, there was an opportunity to win. Or, excuse me, to even to split the series. I mean, even to say even to win the series, absolutely. I guess a team like Texas, who right now isn't a hundred percent, and they the amount of injuries. I mean, Jack Leiter went up there and looked really good through gas, and then the Tigers figured it out. I, I think that was a, a, a sign t- today. Based off the at bats, they have better at bats later in the game, which they're making adjustments, which is something we didn't see the first week or so. Yeah, I, you know, you, you mentioned it, and I, I do think that is cause for optimism is that they keep fighting in these games. They keep, you know, they they, they have chances late in just about every game. It seems like um, they're relying a little bit too much on other teams to to make mistakes and errors. <laughs> But, uh, you know, they're, well, they're 10 and 9 through 19 games. I guess, I, you know, I was going to use this as my inside the number, but uh, since we're talking about it and since I brought it up, I have a backup inside the number anyway. But my, it was going to be six. That's the number of errors the Tigers committed in the last two games of the series. Ah. And every single one of them cost them a run. You, you, it started with Scooble with a throwing error in the very first batter yeah. uh, on, on Wednesday. Colt Keith made his first error of the year later in the sixth inning. That was part of a three-run inning. Uh, in the ninth inning, Torkelson made an error that led to the the game winning run, and then today another Colt Keith bobble. That's it's been unfortunate. You know he was he was playing so clean up until the last couple of days. Yep. Matt Veerling made an error in center field that led to uh, a, another run. Runner got to third, and then the Urshela error that we talked about already, and that doesn't even come into like just the mental mistakes that weren't counted as errors. Like there was a play earlier where Colt Keith didn't take the out at second. He could have got Seager at second probably, but went to first, so didn't get the lead yeah. runner. And then uh, in that same, I think his eighth inning, Torkelson, kind of late reaction, late decision, made that throw to second and was offline. It didn't get the out there. It's, yeah. I think he would have, you know, I think he thought about coming home again. It's just, I don't know. It seems like the game s- speeds up on Torkelson at times, and and like he hasn't made up his mind beforehand what he wants to do. Uh, yeah, he's and- got to qualify runners and be be more committed to one path. There's no question. Yeah. So, and I've got more on that later. But yeah, it, it's. It's just it's it's a bummer to see that much uh, those many mistakes cost them two games really. Yeah. Well, so, also my torque. I don't think he threw a little wide, but the, I I think the runner scores anyway. Uh, yeah, but it was it was just an out that they didn't get, and I, it was that. Yeah. I don't know if that was the play before Tavares got to third. I, I don't I don't remember, but it was things just were like it was like what's going on? They're not, they're suddenly they're not playing, you know, yeah. fundamental defense at all. Right. I did want to play what H.A. Hinch said after the game about why he had a start and then the Tigers at bats today. It looked like he was struggling with everything, you know, from the very beginning, um, kind of tentative getting into the game. I mean, they have an incredible top of the order. They have a really good bottom of the order. But when he, you know, the for leadoff homer, um, and then he settled in that, that inning and then just continued to fight himself. And I don't think he had a reliable pitch that he could go to when he needed to and he just started mixing and matching and trying to get through his outing so i got him out of there as things were starting to wobble again yeah i mean lighter comes in we know he's going to be energetic we know he's going to be nervous we know he's going to you know he's got high-end stuff and 
we found the right balance of aggressiveness against him, but also patience to make him come inside the strike zone. So, you know, I thought Torque, you know, delivered the knockout punch and the shower ball to get him out of the game and, you know, really got us back in the game, literally, I mean, to tie it up. So we had a pretty good game plan. We went out and executed it. Our bats were a little bit better, and um, but we still fell short. That video is courtesy of Valley Sports Detroit. And, yeah, that I that kind of sums up the offense a little bit. It was just, you know, in terms of just as far as, like, just trying to get – there was some sort of execution to it, but – uh, you know, it was the, the, the little things, the little fundamental things is where the Tigers can't afford to do it against a team like Texas. And Texas, the thing about the Rangers, too, is I was talking about I was talking about this earlier in the line or talk about this last week. Their lineup, there's not like you guys, you guys, I think you or Chris, you said it, too. Um, there's not a weak spot, but time, for example, as it, I mean. He went two for five today. That guy is such a balanced swing. When he just he when he connects, he really is just he, really good. I love watching him his at bats. But Marcus Simeon again, almost almost three for Marcus Simeon to me is just like one of those players that I, I don't like. I try to avoid saying cliches like Tiger Killer or anything. He's just a damn good, damn good player. I mean, it's just no matter what. It doesn't matter what version of Marcus Simeon you have, whether he was in Toronto or Chicago. He's just always a steady presence, and, and having him bat leadoff is just such a luxury to have. He was my guy during the great free agent class of whatever year that was when, when they signed Baez. Uh, I've I've loved that guy for years from from the Oakland days too. You know, the, the guy is just he's productive, uh, he's athletic, he's like really got out in the field. You know, just uh, a hell of a nice ball player. I'm trying. Wasn't Simeon the one who made the uncharacteristic random uh, throwing error in the Toronto series that they ended up yeah. they ended up costing the Blue Jays their entire playoffs that year, right? It might have. Yeah, there was two outs in the ninth, and it was an easy flip, and he just short armed it, and uh, one hopped to the to the first baseman, and Vlad couldn't corral it. That I, I was mean, incredible. He is a hell of a player too. I mean, he's one of the. I think if you sort by WAR or whatever over the last five or six years, he's one of the best players in baseball. It just uh, for what for whatever reason that one little misplay sticks out in my mind. But yeah, I mean, he's. He's a killer. Corey Seager's a killer. Adolis Garcia's a killer. <laughs> Heim is a killer. It really is. Like it's it's a great lineup. And that's why it's just frustrating that you know you 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 can't make these mistakes against good teams because they don't let up. You're you're you give them an extra chance, they're gonna take advantage of it. And they did every time. Yeah. One highlight to discuss is Derek Subel, who is now rocking an opponent's batting average of 165 against them. He's got a whip of 0.80. That's how good Derek School is going to be. And if you're caught, we'll, we'll, we'll be previewing a little more of the series. But coming up, the Tigers will head to Minnesota starting tomorrow with three game set. Jack Flaherty against Joe Ryan, who carved up the Tigers pretty well with a slider, sweeping slider in his last, I believe it was last weekend. It was last weekend. Sunday. And then yeah. Yeah, last Saturday, it was, yeah, it was, sun, it was a Saturday or Sunday. Eh, either way, it was last yeah. weekend. This is true. <laughs> Andrew Miller says at least the Tigers have scored 13 more runs than the Twins. That's uh, that's true. Well, and and yeah, I mean, you 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 mentioned Scooble as a bright spot, and really, I mean, Myers and Olson were really good too. Like yeah. like Maeda yeah. kind of makes you feel bad about that because that was a stinker, but Olson was outstanding against that lineup, and and Mize was really good too. So, yeah, you still feel pretty good about the the starting pitching, and the bullpen was was solid this week. I mean, they had some hiccups there, but it was nice to see Alex Lane come out in a huge spot today with the bases loaded and get two strikeouts. That that was. A, a big for him, hopefully for going forward, but you never know. Um, yeah, speaking yeah, speaking of which too, I mean, he did strike out Lamford, and he looked and and you and I deadly injured be said in the chat, and it, it is correct. He did look overmatched. All they had to do was just throw slider, slider. But yeah, I think Lang got him on that two seamer, which was some really nice tumble action yeah. on that two seamer. That was a really nice pitch there. And wow. speaking of Olsen, he'll go Saturday against Bailey Odor, and then Sunday Mize against Louis. Barland, or Verland, is it Barland? Either way, Barland. Barland. That's, wow. And uh, yep. Yeah, after that, the Tigers. Uh, was it the next weekend? By the way, uh, I'll, next week I'll be in St. Paul. I will not be here next Thursday. I will be in St. Paul area. I will be at the uh, for a work thing, and so I'm actually going to try to see if I go to a Saints game because the Saints are in town, and they're playing. I want to say 
Rochester? I, I don't remember right now, but I see James I, Woods. I, I, yeah. Oh, but yeah. If, that, if that's the case, then I'm definitely going to go. But the stadium is not too far from. I'm staying at a casino. That's where a uh-huh. work convention is going to be. I don't. I don't gamble because I. I suck at gambling. I just. I, I, it's not that you know. It's just like what about, what about bet to, online. Well, uh, well. If speaking of our friends at Bet Online, <laughs> Bet Online. So our friends over at Bet Online. This is a time of year where. It's your number one source for all summer sports this season. From the NBA, golf, NBA, and NHL playoffs, the playoffs are about to begin. All the stats, news, scores, available to follow your favorite teams, including the Tigers. Get the latest odds and lines, including the team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there for your gambling pleasure. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get on the action. Bet online where the game starts. Hey, all right. I all saw right. a cool watch the other day on Instagram. It was a watch that had a roulette wheel in it. It was only 260,000 pounds. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's just, yeah. anyway. So, so uh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, just real quick back to Alex Lang. I thought that was the most exciting part of the ball game today. I mean, he came in and shut that rally down. And that's, that, that's, the, Alex, that's the guy they need. They need that guy who has a, a, you know, tonight, today was like a one-night stand he was having with the strike zone, right? I mean, he was, <laughs> yeah. He he hooked up with the strike zone and he was around the plate today, and when he's that guy, he's pretty damn good, you know. And um, I, I don't know what the secret is to get to see more of that, but he 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 entered the game with a twenty five percent walk rate, which I, I I've heard is bad. I've heard that's yeah. not that's not good. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Riley Green um, levels of walking. <laughs> but today he he had it going, and um, boy, it, it's a different bullpen. I think if if Alex Lang is is a force. Obviously, I mean that's not like breaking news, but uh, I don't know. Today it looked like when he threw his breakers, they looked like they could potentially be a strike, and then they dropped out of the zone, which I think for him is enough. I think he, when he's struggling, is he throws some pitches that are complete waste pitches. I mean they're they're nowhere near anything. So hopefully they can get him on track this way. That would be pretty nice. Yeah. They definitely need another swing and miss guy too, because you don't want to overuse Shelby Miller. Because I feel like Shelby Miller has been in quite a bit already, as far as appearances go, and you know, worth the bullpen a little bit. Because if my is still continue to do that, I mean, you look at options external, external, internally rather. Matt Manning, pretty good start today in Toledo, that or excuse me, in Rochester, where the bats came alive. There and was West Michigan too. We'll, we'll we'll look at the miners a little bit later, but right now. It is time for Inside the Numbers. All right, uh, Chris, what is your Inside the Number today? Uh, Yeah, so uh, it is 2,868. And that is the number of days between the date when Forrest Whitley was drafted by the Houston Astros, 17th overall in 2016, and when he made his MLB debut on Tuesday. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and you know, th- there are tons and tons of stories of, of baseball players who stick around forever, right, and make it after 10 or 12 years. But, but Whitley's a little bit different because he came out uh, so electric. Um, and it's he's kind of a, a good reminder about how nothing is ever promised and nothing is ever certain. Uh, you know, by that's the same draft as Matt Manning, and by the end of his first pro year, 2017, Whitley was already in Double A and dominating, dominating Double A hitters. 26 strikeouts and four walks and 14 and two thirds innings as a 19 year old. Um, and uh, Matt Manning at that time was in Connecticut and then a little bit in Low A, West Michigan, uh, and in. Whitley came into that season, the next season, 2018, as a consensus top 10 prospect in all of baseball. Uh, may have been the number one pitching prospect overall. I don't remember. And uh, basically, he was kind of like a sure bet to make the majors that year. And then it all fell apart. He got suspended for 50 games, uh, came back a little rusty, pitched in the AFL. Then his command fell apart in 2019. Then there was COVID in 2020. Then he got Tommy John in 2021, only pitched 30 innings in, uh, or 40 innings in 2022. And it was a 6'5 ERA. Injured his lat last year, only pitched 30 innings in the 5.30 ERA. And this year, in the minors, it was a 12 ERA, just three innings in AAA before the Astros called him up because they were desperate. They're they're off to a really rough start, and they need help. 
and he pitched two thirds of an inning, uh, gave up a hit, uh, walked a guy, and hit a guy. Um, oh. So it's just a, it's I don't know. It's, it's a good example of how the star can fall so quickly, and um, I don't know. It's kind of wild. Uh, real quick, did you guys? Maybe this is something before we get to your inside number, Uper. Was there? I saw it. I'm looking for it right now. Tavares doing kind of like a sweep kick. Yeah, when he when he hit, when he was hitting the ground, he kind of flared out his left leg a little bit toward Urshela, right? That's gonna. Was it kind of like a soccer? Look like a soccer move, kind of like. Yeah, you know, it's hard to say what that call would be. It would be an umpire's judgment that he was performing some kind of interference on Urshela there, right? Um, and I would imagine in a rundown, I, I know for a fact in a rundown play, umpires more often than not are looking for obstruction. They're seeing if one of the fielders gets in the way of the runner. Um, so I saw that too. He, he kind of flares out that leg. I think you'd be hard pressed to get that call ever in real time, you know, uh, because also I, I think the umpire was something that umpires call being straight lined. Uh, he, it looked to me from one angle, like the, um, the back of Urshela was, or excuse me, the, the runner was between him and Urshela's glove. So how could he really see that, that, that tag missed? Now he was right. The tag missed, but the way they were lined up, I think he was kind of half guessing, probably going by body language, <laughs> unless he had a little better angle than the TV showed me. But I, I don't think I don't think the runner did anything really egregiously illegal there for a call. Okay, my opinion. All right, All right. let's see here. Somebody tagged me. I guess I, let me see if they tagged me on. Let's see if I can find it. And the video. Uh, was, yeah, I wonder if it's on Twitter if they tag me on it. They tag me on Twitter. It's all right. Well, either way, I'll find it here in a second. But yeah, I kind of want to. I want to see that. So you, while we look for that, while I look for that, youper, go ahead. What's your inside number? I got uh, two quick ones. Uh, the first one are fifteen and sixty-seven, and that is not a reference to the Pistons' record. <laughs> okay, so just yeah, better than their actual record. <laughs> well, I can be hopeful. Right. So anyway, um, the 15% is the number of games in Major League Baseball um, that have been over three hours this year. 15%. In 2021, that number was 67%. So um, the number of three-hour games is even down a little from last year when there was 17%. So that's why I, I really cringe when I see – the players and there are a few other people talking about getting rid of that pitch clock. The pitch clock has been a godsend in my opinion. I'm sorry. I, I, I love the quick pace of the games now. Um, I love the game before, but I love it even better now. So, but it, that number is really stunning. Uh, 15% down from 67, just a couple of years back. Um, my other quick real number is Paul Skeens, minor league phenom in the pirates organization. Of the 105 fastest pitches by a starter in AAA, Mr. Skeens has 104 of them. I, who has the other one? I, well, you would put me on the spot. No, I don't well, know. No, you know what? I'll go look for it now. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. The guy, the guy looks pretty good. I, I don't think he's going to be in the minors too long. All right. Um, I still haven't seen it on Twitter, so I apologize. I, I'll, I'll find it here eventually, but because I got tagged on. Yeah, I kind of tagged on something else earlier. Uh, there's two numbers I wanted to get into. So the first one is the it, it actually eight, and that is the number of one run games the Tigers have been involved in this season. So they're five and three in that. Their eight one run games are tied with the Yankees. The second most, really only Oakland was who has nine. And then the other number that I was tagged on, on Twitter was forty five point three, and that's the percentage of runs in the eighth inning or later which is the highest among all baseball and the other team that's involved in that is the twins who are the tigers are playing this weekend at 39.7 percent so those are well, uh yeah those are great and you know one thing to add on to your one run game number is how many extra inning games have they played and a lot of those didn't end they ended up like a four or five run game but those were through nine innings 
he was closer to that one run game. So the Tigers are three and one in extra inning games so far this oh. year. Yeah. So it's well, that kind of couples with the, the point we were making earlier that all these mistakes in these close games get amplified. Although it's interesting, another interesting stat that I, I found there is a Tiger starter works six plus innings. So hmm. that's a hmm. that's a so far in ten they've done that ten times a season and they're five and five. So the bullpen, you know, it's uh again as, as much as as much is it, it maybe it's not getting as much work as we think it is, but ten games out of nineteen is or yeah after nineteen games is pretty bad, but. Yeah, there's as far as my idea goes, let's go back to that in a second because it came up on the chat again as people are coming in late. It is it is admittedly there there's the April numbers. Everybody's talking about some of the April May numbers he struggles with. But the one thing about the key takeaway about today, my idea was everything was up in the zone and just getting tattooed. I mean, it was just the amount of exit velocity stuff that out there. It was just Texas was almost putting on a T and in, in hitting it. It could have been a lot worse. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to watch that now and know that Matt Manning has pitched fairly well, you know, in his outings in Detroit. And and you do wonder how long. I mean, this Scott Harris and AJ Hinch have proven to be pretty patient and Maeda has a track record in the big leagues that you, you give them a little rope here. But and if they if they really have designs on competing this year uh, and whether they do or not, you can judge for yourself based on their offseason moves. Right. But um you know, I don't know how much longer you, you want to mess around with that when you could theoretically put Manning in the rotation and I don't know, maybe Maeda has a fingernail issue or a stub toe, or maybe he moves to the bullpen for a little bit and you, you send, you know, Will Vest, Alex Fiedo down, something like that. Somebody who has an option that might not necessarily deserve it, but then, then at least you got your five best starters up there. I don't know. It's, it's, um, because it's been rough so far, I, I, you know he's got seven home runs and, and fewer than what eighteen, nineteen innings. It's it's uh, you can't live like that in the big leagues. The one, the Andrew Miller, I think said it perfectly. Harris will never give pitching free agent a second year again. Hmm. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's possible. I, it, it, it it totally theoretically is possible. I, I think that I think Andrew's on to something like that because the Tigers continue to develop pitching within. Case of point to another pitcher who pitched a, a lot, allowed his first run technically yesterday was Kyder Montero. Prior to that, he had not allowed a run so far in Toledo. And Montero, and I was talking to I was talking to Mark Gurash from the Days of War podcast you know, the other day about Montero, and I'm 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 sticking my guns about this alongside Jordan Ham, Jaden Ham, Jordan Ham, Jaden Ham. Montero, I think, is very underrated as a prospect in the system. I think he is going to prove a lot of people. He's going to be a solid pitcher, whether they put him in the bullpen or not, or however they see fit to use him. I think he's good as a starter. But So if you want to know Matt Manning's stats right now in Toledo, the only thing that stands out is he has six walks, but then that could be automated strike zone. It could be a lot of different things. Um, that is a thing where you have to – be somewhat concerned, but I mean, but then he does well in the major league level, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, you know, so he had four walks and start against the Mets, but he somehow overcame that. But 12 innings, five hits, four runs, and 10 strikeouts down Toledo so far with the ERA of 2.92. So, and and to answer my question regarding Yoop's, uh, you know, fun number with Paul Skeens, the, the other starting pitcher, the great David Festa, David Festa. <laughs> who, th who threw a single pitch at 101.1, what? but then his next hardest pitch uh, is 98.7. So I'm a little bit skeptical of that. But then, yeah, it's all Skeens all the way down to A.J. smith Shaver who hit 99.1. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Paul Skeens is, is literally sitting at 100 miles an hour. It's it's kind of ridiculous. I've heard of half of these guys, and the ones I do know are way past the prime. Most of these guys never had a prime. That's the David Festa comment there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got to confess that I never heard of him. Do you know that that popped into my head too? Same thing popped into my head. So we've been yeah. hanging out too much. Oh, uh, the, the dad jokes are long yeah. in there, but uh, yes, Josh, the, the hero had a he had a grand slam earlier in, in, in Toledo. That was a, that was good to see. 
because it was the, in terms of doing clips today, I fully totally forgot that Toledo Toledo's playing right. time, four o'clock. Was it? The, the well, game? yesterday's game was suspended. The, the Montero start was suspended, and so they played a full game today with Manning starting, and then they played a second game, which was, I believe, just seven innings, mm. or was it another second full game? But um, yeah, I totally forgot about that too, and, and we missed Justice Bigby's first home run of the year and uh, some other stuff. But Toledo put it up, so we just retweeted. Yeah, Toledo did the work for us. I mean, they're usually late by three, four, we like to, five. We, we like to beat them by a few minutes, yeah. But it depends. Yeah, but you know what? Though I, 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 you know what? Not to humble brag, but this is something that we're worth mentioning. Whenever we put it out, we actually get better traction than Toledo does. No offense to the Mudhens; they, their social media <laughs> people do a fantastic job, I'm sure. But um, no, Jay, Jay earlier, Jay Bell, and not to be confused with former pirate great Jay Bell. Said def or else only well, play for the Diamondbacks too. Okay. Um, definitely not competing. It was something that Scott Harris said last week. We played the audio from last week where they're just taking it game by game, day by day, which is basically saying, Yeah, we're 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 doing what we can, in other words. That that's the way and I think that's a good way to saying what Jay Jay said, essentially, in the Harris, most Harris way possible. So yeah. um Go ahead. I mean, no, I'll just say, like, you know, Mark Hanna has been pretty great so far. He's, uh, I don't know if he's hitting for a terribly high average at the moment, but he's, he, Riley Green, and, and Kerry Carpenter are like the three guys producing on offense. And, and Urshela has been fine, right? He's come up with a couple big hits. He's doing what he does. He doesn't walk, he puts the ball in play. So they, the moves they made on the offense have been okay. You know, Flaherty uh, has mostly been good outside the one really ugly start, and Maida has mostly been bad. So it's it's a real mixed bag there for the player acquisitions this offseason. Yeah, yeah. Jay and Miller are fine. Yeah, the Mustache yeah, Boys sure. or whatever they're – what is it, the Mustache Boys are called? Or something? Yeah, that's that's Chafin and Foley, right? Yeah, the Chafin Mustache. And Foley, yeah. yeah. Does Miller have yeah, a imagine... mustache too? Who does? Miller, does he have oh. a mustache? I don't know. I haven't uh... – no, I don't, I don't really, yeah, same here. That was the if what's his face? Uh, if there was trying to think of the picture, Mason Engler was up there too. They would have like a trio of it. And by the way, some <laughs> of his numbers down Toledo it was Evan, Evan Woodbury posted a tweet on his not to get too far sidetracked before we get to the good and the bad and the ugly, but there was a really good stat on Mason Engler that I'm trying to find real quick here. By the way, uh, yeah, so see here through four starts for uh Kenta Maeda 7.64 ERA and 17 innings of work, seven walks, 12 strikeouts, and seven home runs. So that was something that, um, bear, bear repeating about my, my, uh, yeah. it's so hard to evaluate someone when they're going bad, yeah, right? I mean, it's it's nothing's gonna look good right now, and it's easy to say, you know. Put them in the bullpen or or do something with them, but uh, he has the track record of at least being a guy who's going to be around a four, you know, four twenty ERA somewhere in there. Um, I just got to believe he, they're not going to write him off for quite some time, base because of four. He's had one good start, right? And he had one start which was acceptable, and then he's had two duds. So I think we're a long way from knowing exactly what they have with Kenta Maeda this year. Um, I, I think as the weather warms up, maybe that's something for him that might help. I don't know. Maybe it's his grip gets some better movement on pitches. Who knows? Ace Angler, by the way, has struck out 17 of the 42 batters he faced. 40.5%. Wow. He's yeah. also, I feel like he's had a fair number of walks, though. I remember seeing a couple times where he ended up, you know, yeah. the bases are loaded and he ended up getting out of it. But, uh, yeah, on, on Maeda, it's... You know, when you don't have a fastball, right? He's 89, 90 miles an hour. And then his two, you know, his his secondary pitches are hanging left and right. The worst pitch in baseball is a hanging splitter. He's been throwing those. And the second worst is a hanging breaking ball. <laughs> He's been throwing those. And it's like, yeah, I mean, that's why you've given up seven home runs because you are you don't have a, a, a big fastball and your, your two secondary pitches, the two main ones, are, are not doing anything. So, yeah, yeah they got to figure something out. I, I don't know if it's warming up, getting looser, what it is. I and mean, people keep talking about how he's a slow starter, but uh, this is awfully slow. Yeah, well, the kind of those numbers kind of lead into our uh, next segment. Carl, 
Carlton. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 don't, you ever seen the end of that? I know I ever watch it. I always look down when that runs. Run. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, it's one of my favorite moments of TV all time. One of the ugliest, funniest moments ever where Carlton thinks it's going to go in. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Oh, man. All right, Chris, what is your the good, the bad, the ugly this week? All right, so my good uh, is is William Contreras, the uh, the catcher for Milwaukee, off to an outstanding start this year. Uh, he he just ended his 12-game hitting streak on Wednesday, uh, and he finished last year on an 18-game winning streak. Um, the crazy stat I heard on the radio the other day is he had a, a streak of 55 consecutive games where he either got on base or drove in a run. Um. And so far this year, he's batting 358 with four home runs. So it's a it's a 184 WRC plus. He's catching most days. He's tenth in F WAR since the start of the 2023 season. 6.6 6 WAR in 158 wow. games. It's a full win better than than Adley Rutschman, who's the number two catcher, and two wins better than the third catcher, Sean Murphy. And um, the wildest part about it to me is if people remember how the Brewers got him, they got him for nothing. They they got involved in the deal, the Atlanta Oakland deal. Uh, if people remember, in, in Milwaukee gave up Esteri Ruiz. That's it. And they got William Contreras and Joel Payamps, who was a really good reliever for him last year. And so that's like one of the biggest robberies in the last few years that I can remember. It's uh, I don't know how they pulled that one off, but kudos to them on that one. Uh, in my bed, uh, you know, this is uh, it's Spencer Torkelson. And um, I understand that I've uh, been labeled as a, a bit of a Spencer Torkelson hater. And By I one accept, person, I, I accept that. Um, Repeatedly, and he did. We 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 have to acknowledge that he had an excellent second half last year. He was getting close to the sort of player they needed him to be. It was like a one twenty something WRC plus over the second half last year. And he does seem to be seeing the ball a little bit le better lately. You know, he had a, a hard double today, a couple of walks. Then he struck out in like the biggest bet of the game. Uh, but it's, his, his WRC plus right now is eighty nine, which is it's far from the worst on the team. But he, he just has to be much, much better than this if the Tigers want to go anywhere this year or next year or in the future, right? Like, and, and and it's on both sides of the balls. I don't know how much longer we can stick with him at first base. And by we, I mean the Tigers, of course. Uh, it's, you know, he's not the worst defender in the world, but he just doesn't, I talked about earlier, he doesn't seem to have the instincts or I don't know if what it is. He's good at picking the ball, but just everything else doesn't seem to work there. And again, I, I think if the Tigers are serious, about contending, they may want to just look at moving Torque to DH right now and putting Canna at first base. And I don't know if Canna is that much better than Torque, but since Torque joined baseball, he's got negative 16 defensive run saved at first base. It's the worst in baseball <laughs> as a first baseman. So I, I don't know if you can get much worse there. Um, and obviously, you don't want to give up on your first round 1 1 pick too soon. But either way, if he's playing first base or if he's a DH, he has to start hitting more home runs. Uh, he didn't hit any in the spring. This is 19 games to start the season without a home run. Um, he had the longest he went last year was 14 games, which is, uh, you know, still kind of long. He's always been a little bit streaky, but but 19 games, 20 games. He had a couple of those in 2022, and he's he, he feels like 2022 torque to me right now, which was not great, right? He got sent back to Toledo. Um, he just has to be better than this. And then. I know, kind of to rub some salt in the wounds. I, I was looking back, and um, it's here's a comparison. So, so far through his career, Torkelson is a 221, 304, 392 hitter with 390 or, or 39 home runs in 288 games with the Tigers. So that's a, a 696 OPS and a 94 OPS plus. Mm. And so I, I was thinking back about another highly touted top five pick for the Tigers uh, by the name of Eric Munson. Who sure. hit 215, 287, 414 with 40 home runs in 246 games? It was a more offensive era, so it was only an 87 OPS plus. But that we can even make the comparison is uh, is is kind of damning to me. And and uh, he just has to be better. Like I said, if the Tigers are going to go anywhere in the future, he, he's they got to do something there. Otherwise, they, you know, you might have to seriously look at it. Uh, you know, the first baseman there who's with Arizona is Christian. What's his name? Walker. Is it Christian Walker? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a good player, a great defender at first base for what that's worth, and I think he's a free agent. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's too early to do that, but yeah, it's been rough. Um, and, and my ugly, and this is Raj can attest to this a little bit, uh, is the the quality of pitching in low A um, this year and forever. And, and specifically, I'm going to talk about Pedro Garcia, who is a Tigers prospect, uh, Tigers minor leaguer. Uh, most of you probably aren't familiar 
with him. He's a 22 year old Dominican starting pitcher in Lakeland, signed with the org in 2021 as a 19 year old, so which is you know relatively ancient by international free agent signings uh, standards. I uh, made it up to Lakeland for two innings last year, and he's been in the rotation this year, and he's he's had two starts. And here is how the two starts have gone. Uh, the first one uh, started off walk, 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 strikeout, walk, hit by pitch, walk, hold. Wow. And the second start was today, and it began hit by pitch, walk, hit by pitch, strikeout, wild pitch, walk, walk, single, hold. So through, through two starts, he has pitched two-thirds of an inning, given up one hit, eight walks, three hit batters, nine earned runs, two strikeouts, and an ERA of 121.5. And awesome. um, I don't mean to pick on him because you see that from just about every team. There's at least one or two guys like that that just come out and can't throw a single strike. And, you know, they've actually expanded the strike zone in low A this year. It's it's 21 inches wide, I think, which is four inches wider than. Oh, my gosh. And uh, and guys are still missing like a ton. Uh, ton of, so <laughs> it, it's ugly down there. It's fun to go and look and watch, you know, Josue Bersenio and Max Clark and stuff. But, uh, you know, if you see guys walking a ton. It maybe doesn't tell you a whole lot about the the quality of the hitter's eye. Yeah, that's why you don't. Here's a here's a rule, de facto rule. If you're going to look at scout or scout the prospect lines or whatever, scout the box line or box score, whatever you want to terminology that I cannot come up with all of a sudden because I'm freezing up on it. Essentially, you look at you don't look at a prospect until they get the double A. If they're hitting well in double A, that to me double A is the the standard. If they could get the double A and, and look at look at for example, Kerry Carpenter. Until he got the double A and fixed the swing, Kerry Carpenter was just another guy who was just going through the org. Then he got his swing mechanics, started hidden, started really, really excelling. It was the same thing with Parker Meadows and Winsteel Perez. When they figured it out in high A, it was like, okay, that's good, cool and all, but can you do that in Erie? And they did. And then as a result, they're down in the major league roster. So until they get the double A, I really think you can't. <laughs> Some of the comments in here are fantastic. <laughs> Is he, um, it's you know, um, uh, it's one of those things where I, I look at that as a uh, you know, um, as those that, that's an outlier, okay? So that, that that's why I look at it, but uh, yeah, well, yeah there's and, a couple, yeah. there's a couple games against the Brinkington, Binghamton, remember, or uh, against the Marauders where the Tigers would hit a ball to let like a, a simple fly ball. Chris, remember that? And they were just, mm -hmm. they kept losing in the sun so easily. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ugly baseball. I mean, it's supposed to be, right? Like, this is these are guys learning how to play professional baseball for the most part. But it's it's ugly all the way. We looked at, you watched Jaden Ham start in, in high A, and the, uh, not to hit Uper where it hurts, but the umps are pretty bad. <laughs> I watched Jackson Jobs start in double A, and the ump was pretty bad. Now, the thing about low A is it's the automated ball strike system. Uh Tuesday through Thursday, and then they have the challenge system on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So theoretically, it should be you should be able to throw a little bit more strikes because you're not you're really at the whim of maybe a, a, an up who's learning the trade. But uh, yeah, it's it's this is this is the result of contracting the minor leagues, getting rid of short season ball. Sure. You've got these guys who have more potential but less ability uh, <clears throat> being kept in the system, and and your 30th round college draft pick who knows how to throw strikes, but maybe doesn't have the stuff for the future um, left without a job. And so you have these ugly uncompetitive games. I mean, you saw Lakeland got down nine, nothing today, I think, because it started out, you know, it was, it was five or six, nothing in the first inning. Cause the starter couldn't throw a strike. Yeah. It's, Oh man, it is one of those things where I, I, I feel bad for some of the broadcasters down there, because if you're doing a game by yourself, and you're seeing that you have to, you know, do you wash your eyes out uh, after a game? Anyway, all right. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a good ugly there. Youper, what is your good to bad the ugly this week? Okay, my good, um, Casey Mice. Uh, you know, as the season, you know, as the off season wore on, uh, to me, I felt that one of the big keys to success this year was a resurgent Casey Mice. Uh, maybe seeing the guy that we hoped to see when they were, when they drafted him 1-1. No, I'm not saying we've seen that guy yet. We haven't, but he's looking good to me. Um, you know, one thing I mentioned, and if someone wasn't listening, I'll just be brief. I was wondering if we would see a Casey Mize at a level no one's really seen in a long time because he, the year before his last season at Auburn, he was shut down with 
uh, tight forearm. Uh, and then he milked it through the next year and got through it and got drafted and got paid, which is great for him. But I always felt that Tommy John was lurking, and which it is with most pitchers anyway. Uh, and sure enough, we got it. Now, on the spectrum of Tommy John's uh, recoveries, he might be as good as he's ever going to be right now um, because he should have confidence in that tendon. Uh, he should not be holding anything back, trying to milk it through a start um, like he may have in the past. Um, I like what his fastball looks like right now to me. And I've railed about this for years about Casey Mize. Uh, but right now that fastball looks a little tighter to me and not something that's just kind of, even at 97 is screaming, hit me. Um, and you got to pitch out that fastball in my opinion. And he's coming inside a little bit here and there, uh, which I've always also liked. So we'll see if it continues. We're a long way from, you know, making a final determination, but I think the first three starts have been pretty, uh, positive. I, I thought he threw some pretty nasty splitters too. Some some yes. of the better splitters I've seen him throw this year. So that yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent My bad. The Tigers came in into today and they didn't have any today, so they should still be. They have eight steals, eight stolen bases, and we are which is what came in today tied for 24th, and it's a light schedule in baseball, so they're going to be somewhere around 24th, 25th after today. Um. You know, all the rules changes, you know, the less throws to first, bigger bases, everything um, was designed to get the running game going in baseball. And Detroit seemed to kind of dabble in it last year at times. But this year, between not having anybody on base to steal, which is kind of a prerequisite, and then uh, not having really any base-stealing threats for the most part, uh, they are definitely playing a different game than a lot of offenses in baseball are. Like, for instance, you know, the Tigers have eight steals, the Reds have 35, you know. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, I I went through a long stretch in my life where I thought maybe the, the steal was a bit overrated. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, if you don't get to a certain percentage, it is overrated. But uh, at the same time, I have enjoyed the baseball the last couple of years, bringing the steal back into the game and having it be something we're thinking about. Um, so I don't know. It, it's something that's probably not going to change anytime soon. The Tigers aren't going to add a bunch of uh, speedsters out of nowhere. It's just something that's going to have to change over time. We'll see how you it know, you, it's, it's weird that you bring that up because earlier this week, White Herzog, who White Ball, which was all yeah. about seals, like the guys of like Vince Coleman and Willie McGee, and it was just yeah. a, that was a team that ran, 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 passed away Andy this Hurt. week. So that's yeah. – yeah, that's yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another one. That's a good example there. But that's just funny you bring it up because that Whitey Ball, that's what I think of when I think of like that kind of him and Billy Martin in the American League. Just it's, they, it's just that they could get to a point where it's a, a, a weapon that they have in the in the quiver, right? Or an arrow in the quiver would be nice. Not even they don't have to be, you know, all steals all the time. I was, uh, I was just looking, they are the fifth fastest, uh, as a team in terms of sprint speed. <laughs> Really, their team, they're 27.2 as a team, uh, feet per second. Um, okay. Park, Parker Meadows, the fastest, uh, but it's just weird, you know, he, he hasn't gotten many hits, and you know, I, I think uh, he's walked a decent a few times, but I it does feel like he's he's like, I, I, I I'm not here that often, I want to stay here. Yeah, um, I can't steal first, right? <laughs> yeah, and and Matt Veerling is fast, but has never been a great base stealer. I think you know if Winslow Perez plays a little bit more, uh, he, he'll probably start stealing bags. But yeah, it's uh, I don't know, it's a strange, strange bunch. They all run fairly well, but none of them are great base stealers. Cold Keith too, good runner. Yeah, I mean Baez is probably their best base runner, uh, but again, he's not been on base a ton. <laughs> Except you know <laughs> he 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 uh, he's looking better in the last couple of days, and hopefully it's something he can sustain and not just like a short hot streak. So maybe the the lesson here is if they start to hit. And the on-base percentage of the team goes up. Then we'll see where they are in steals at, you know, later this year. <laughs> we'll hope for the best. Uh, my ugly, not so much about the person that this is coming from, but about the whole system in general. Uh, a friend of the show, J.J. Cooper, had an article out about um, blackouts in baseball earlier this week. And he made a really good point that doesn't get um, mentioned enough, is that basically as things stand – Cable, cable television is mostly going away, right? I mean, we're going to a streaming society. Uh, and the blackout 
system in baseball was designed for the cable TV era more than anything. So you would think that change is afoot, that things will happen to help solve some of the blackout issue um, as our society moves in one direction away from the old cable direction. However, the reason I put it under the ugly is, as someone who has been a Tiger fan in Iowa and has had to scramble in many different ways to see them play the Royals, the Twins, and the White Sox, not to mention when they happen to play a few inter- interleague games against St. Louis, Milwaukee, and uh, the Cubs, uh, we've heard it before. I mean, it's been a lot of, you know, JJ had a few people from the industry talking in his article. That's great. But I remember when Bob Bowman, who ran uh, ML, MLB Media, or whatever that was called, Emblem, mm-hmm. um, he said, oh, we're going to take care of it. This is going to get fixed in the next 18 months, blah, blah, blah. It never gets fixed. But Silly talked about getting it fixed. Manfred has talked about getting it fixed. They don't do anything. And I just don't even know where they're going to start because they need some team to give up some revenue, which every team is just loath to do. And uh, so I appreciate JJ for giving everybody a little hope. I love his work. He's the best. Uh, I'm just not buying this one. I don't, I don't blame you. I mean, there's been such a, there's a good call, good call out there. It, it, it's one of those things too, where I, I, I will not understand how baseball just, just goes. How do they continue to ignore that? I, I especially even like, what didn't you, you mentioned something to you in North Carolina, right? Like he's blocked out of three different markets in North Carolina. Yeah. How do you, how does that happen? Baltimore and the nationals. And I think the Braves, that's what the, the Braves, but the, there's Georgia is nowhere near North Carolina. Correct I me. Mean, it's like a couple States away. Anyway, I think it's so. a couple States away. So it's not like it's like a bordering <laughs> state. That makes no sense. I think the, it's just, you're basically telling the fans you're just basically doing this the entire yeah. time. You're just flicking them off. You're flicking them off. You don't care. And, but then again, I, I like guys can stream the minor leagues anytime, anywhere. And you're okay with empty crowds in the background. Okay. I, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so it, it's one of those things where I'm just, yeah, I, there's, even, even like, for example, we talked about this last week. NBC is not streaming those games anymore on Sunday morning. That was right. a disaster. I mean, that was a whole – there's so many opportunities for them to do things, and they just go, eh, we just don't – anyway. I never got to point to that, just yeah. that standalone Sunday morning thing where you've got to go to a, a, an app. I mean, I, got, I had Peacock for something else, so I watched all those games, but – I just didn't. I was wondering what the overall appeal is from coast to coast on that thing. Well, I am a jackass. I will freely admit that I'm a jackass. I did not realize that Georgia borders North Carolina. Wow, yeah, the, I'm a jackass. I did not realize because I thought North Carolina was more. I thought it was above Virginia, and I'm looking at a map right now. It's, it's Thank you, old Virginia, yeah. Unlike people on the. T- By the way, I will call myself out each and every time. If I say something stupid, I apologize. I'm not <laughs> apologize. I, I'll call myself out. That was stupid of me. I, I yeah, not realized. I didn't think it. you were wrong. So it's I, the south, yeah. the, the southwestern port portion of North Carolina. Yeah. Like it's south of Asheville. Like I think where Cooper is. I think he's in like the Durham, Charlotte area. Maybe I don't know. Uh, farther on the other side, it's it is far away. It's like yeah. uh, it's like us being blacked out of Cubs games, basically. Yeah. No, that's a good. Yeah, because it's yeah, yeah. You're right. It's on the top of there. So, but yeah. I, I, <laughs> I just I did not realize it was that close, but um. So my good this week is one Colton Kowser, who has been off to a really good start. The reason why I wanted to point this out is he is batting. I mean, again, I know in terms of plate appearances, but what's impressive about his numbers? So he's batting 400, 429, and slugging is like Baltimore again, just clunking out the prospects. You know, just turning them out, prospect central here but what's impressive is is his k rate he's doing this at a 30 percent strikeout rate that's impressive that's really impressive because i mean again in a part-time in a, in a platoon situation if you look at the top five batting i mean you look at the top five among batting in all of baseball 
everybody's around 20%. I mean, you have Juan Soto's at 12, Jose Altuve 14, Mookie Betts. But Colton Towser up there and among the top 10 at 30%. Again, limited play appearances aside, he's already got a 1.2 war, F war. That's pretty awesome. And right. Baltimore just, again, it's it's not just infielders. It's this guy who's, I believe he's also, he's playing the majority, he's playing in the he's outfield. outfielder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not bad for a guy who they picked in the fifth round out of Sam Houston University. I thought he was their first rounder. He was, oh, yeah. Oh, he, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, the, but, the, um, yeah. Right. no, it, it, yeah, I mean, he was, he was a guy, you know, they just have an embarrassment of riches. We, we've yeah. talked about the infielders a ton, Colton Kaiser. I do. The thirty percent strikeout rate makes me think that perhaps he's a do for some regression, uh, along with the yeah. five nineteen batting average on balls in play. But yeah. the numbers he's put up, you can't argue with them, really. I mean, he's the production's the production, and and he is. Uh, and I guess if he cools off, they'll just go ahead and bring up, uh, you know, Ryan Stowers or whatever his name is, with Kyle Stowers. I don't remember his name, but uh, the other guy who hit seventy home runs off the Tigers in spring training. Maybe we should have seen these issues with Maeda coming when he hit every ball over the fence against him. <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. Oh, they, didn't he have two home runs against him? I think I think he hit three that game, and I think two were against Maeda. I think. There's already a lot of trade speculation being circled around the, the Orioles, right? How big a run they want to make? Do they go get pitching? They certainly do. We we everybody says it. I mean, they have the surplus yeah. bats. They they should be able to tailor made. Uh, Taylor, make a uh, a trade that would really bolster their rotation. Yeah, yeah, they should. I mean, we thought so last year too, right? Yeah, uh, but yeah, the 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 GM has been called out for being too way too conservative for not trading, and rightfully so. I mean, I I think they have. I mean, I think with the new owner too, who's been out, he's been out hanging out with both fans. That might be a little different mandate coming down because I'm sure he wants to win and win now. But this guy's been, yeah, I forgot the gentleman's name, the new owner who's been out drinking with the fans and trying to <laughs> get out there partying it up. So, um, by the way, uh, I will be reading everybody's good and bad. Was, so thank you for everybody who's le- literally, who are, sorry, <laughs> as I was reading the, the Orioles literally have too many dudes, and that's absolutely correct. Well, mm-hmm. Some people left some good and bad in the uglies, and so I'll get back to that there in a second. And uh, Matt also get some, pardon me? Matt Manning would look good in an orange uniform. That orange jersey. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That man for I, I, Colby Mayo or something. <laughs> One can dream, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> so my bet is he is a, a Rolis Chapman who received a two-game suspension and being fined for a inappropriate action at the bottom of the eighth. So I, I have the inappropriate action here. I don't know if anybody saw this or not. Did it involve but, his mom? Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> you know what's Ooh. funny is that like I I was talking to talking to my cousins about that. And <laughs> you know, I'm 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 Cuban, you know, I'm half Cuban, and so it was one of those things where I was just sitting there going, Man, come on, <laughs> come on, man. You can't you can't you can't you can't really you can't explain that. I can't defend that. I can't defend that with yeah, pretty much that's what it was. It wasn't much of anything. I don't know why. The, the, the reason why I thought it was bad is because I thought that I, I don't see what the big deal was about that. I really thought that was kind of a, a he, much do about nothing situation. Most likely, he personalized it. Instead of saying that call ah. sucks, he said, you suck. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. all it takes. If, if, it, if, it, if it goes from in general to personal, yeah, I'm just going to run you. I figured, okay, I figured you're going to have some insight on this. And my ugly this week involves a gentleman by the name of Gary Cooper, not the former actor Gary Cooper, and also put on the uh, subject of the song "Putting on the Ritz" done by Taco <laughs> in 1980, 81. That's a random reference for you. <laughs> also, did blackface in the video? Should be canceled. So, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he didn't do anything. In other words, Sam, he didn't do anything. You merit that, so it was just a, just a bad situation. But Gary Cooper was a outfielder who played for the Atlanta Braves in for in the mid seventies. He spent forty two days on the team, and on the forty third day, which is the threshold for earning a mandatory MLB pension, he was had to play a game before it was canceled due to rain. 
However, before his next appearance, he got sent down to the minors and never returned. Oh, so for wow. 44 years, he's just took one day from getting a mandatory league pension. This was a story in CNN, and it just stood out to me that he's made two appeals to a committee comprising of representatives of MLB and the Players Association. They both rejected under the 43-day rule. However, the rainout had no impact on the number of days serviced. A system doesn't need a game to be played for that day to count. Now, so an, um, there's an online petition to help him. He's 67 now. He's given one the, the, the Braves signed him for one year, one day contract. The other Braves coaches have, so he's, he receives his 40 day minimum to qualify for the pension. The pension's got nearly the signature, the, the petition rather, has nearly 5,000 signatures, but he still has, he has no car, no home, no savings, no pension, oh. and struggles to pay for his phone. And every, uh, it's part of what they say at change.org. So he works part time as a landscaper, but work's been lately scarce. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's the he, the guy who's helping him uh, organize this, who put the petition together, was the gentleman who runs the landscaping business. So it was a very nice thing to do. And so I'll I'll put the link in the story in the YouTube, but or YouTube, um, but the Braves signed Satchel Page in 1968 to the coaching staff to help him get his pension. So they're hoping, I mean, he's gotten support from people around like the mayor of Savannah and all that. So hopefully that happens. Um, it, it should be, it just do, do the right thing. Baseball. Yeah. You hope that's, that's a real bummer. That's a, like a moonlight grab surface time situation. Um, it does. It, it calls to mind uh, Andrew tolls, the, the Dodgers thing where they uh, poor guy just is, is mentally ill. And the Dodgers, I think, still keep signing him to some sort of deal so he can get health care because he needs it, uh, which is, is nice to see. And it's a drop in the bucket for a billion, you know, multi-billion dollar organization. And you would hope that something can can come through to help this guy. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, it's just it's a whole the whole thing sad, but I don't want to end the show on a, on a bad note. But uh, yeah, that was just one of those things where it was. I don't want to say necessarily ugly, but I hope that the Braves do the right thing and take care of that. So, but I mean, we can end the show making fun of the White Sox. I mean, I think that can be a, a new, a new thing now going There's forward. Wrong with that. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So what are the white, I mean, it, it's going to be a, a, a Chicago Sox. this is going to be a regular bit now because we do. So back in the day, Chris, I think it's fair to say we made fun of them. Jeff Lo- Jeffrey Loria when he owned the Marlins, correct? I mean, that was a regular thing we used to do. Marlins and Orioles were targets of ours quite frequently uh, <laughs> five, six years ago. Yes, yes. So the White Sox have become our new, our, our new target. And I, I feel sorry. Like I was originally going to write this year. They won. I mean, they won yesterday. I mean, they won yesterday. Two to. I mean, they won two to one. That, that, that's good, right? But sure. You have the Phillies, and then you have the that they're actually. I might actually go see them next week in Minnesota because the White Sox are going to be playing the Twins there. So I might go to that. Um, we can make fun of the Twins, you know. Well, let's. But can the make, White make Sox are of, so easy. We can fit them with both. Why not? It's, well, we but just go ahead. You know, we've been talking all year about this. The Tigers' offense is hard to watch because they're not scoring runs. They've scored almost twice as many runs as the White Sox. The White Sox have <laughs> thirty-eight runs. In what eighteen games is that? How many games yeah. they played? Uh, Thirty-eight runs in eighteen games. That is uh, just barely over two runs a game, and uh, the run differential is fifty-four. And the Twins, yeah, the Twins are bad too. Uh, at least so far in terms of run differential and things like that, they're negative twenty. They've only scored fifty-eight runs. That's thirteen fewer than the Tigers. So, yeah, maybe the Tigers can go in there and, and steal this series from the Twins. The Twins uh, split it with the Tigers back last weekend. The well, Tigers can pull this series off, no question about it. Yeah, no, and I, I think they could easily if Olsen pitches like he did the other day <laughs> on Saturday. They definitely, I think they could take two out of three of the series. But the reason why I also bring up the White Sox is because, and a no surprise moment was is that the the article cracked me up because it said long time. T- this was from Yar Barker, long time White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson was back in Chicago on Thursday as a member of the Miami Marlins was totally not diplomatic about his time with his former team. 
Well, no shit, Sherlock. I mean, of course, it's not going to he's not going to sit there and speak lonely about Chicago. And he suggested that the White Sox refuse an offer to contract extension he asked for and imply that the White Sox lean on him too much to provide all their offense. Bull. Okay. Bull. Come on. Yeah, I don't know about that. And he said, yes, this is this is because they were in town against to play the Cubs. And he said he asked for extensions year after year. So he, since his time with the White Sox would end, he's OK with being free of the pressure. As T.A. goes, <laughs> so do the White Sox, because it takes a whole team. Well, I would say this. Um, I, he was a very good player for the White Sox, and he torched the Tigers enough where Tiger fans feared him all the time. But I never really – I never went to bed th- after watching a White Sox game thinking, ah, oh, that's Tim Anderson's team. You know, I'm, it was just part of the White Sox. He was a very good player, but I didn't view him as a total juggernaut. Yeah, I, I never – yeah, I, I, I didn't understand that at all. Um I never yeah. thought that it was Tim Anderson's team at all. I never, never, not once ever thought that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he was he was a great hitter for a couple of years there, but it was always, you know, there, there was always, there were always flaws in his game. Right? He wasn't the world's best defender by any means, and he didn't hit for a ton of power, and he rarely walked. He just was a really smart, good hitter, particularly against the Tigers. Of course, the cool. Tigers were putting out some pretty bad pitching against them. But yeah, I mean, I that was Jose Abreu's team. Uh, Tim Anderson was certainly one of the, you know, tiger killers. Uh, if we go back to earlier in the show with the cliches, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, does it surprise me that he wasn't happy with the White Sox? No. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember, what was it? The, the year that I think he made the all-star <laughs> team. Do you remember that? And they showed the video. Yeah, it's true. He does have a glass chin, glass jaw. Um, was it the 2021, 2020? I don't remember that. It must've been 21 when Larusa was there. And they, uh, I think Tim Anderson made the All Star game, and they were showing the inside the locker room <laughs> announcement, yeah. and it was like a morgue in there. It was the weirdest like celebration I've ever seen for a guy making the All Star team, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, you know, it's it's a moribund organization. All right, so let's, let's catch up in the chat here. So there's a good one here from OBK, Royals lead MLB with a 40 run differential. Holy shnikes! Wow, that's that's a that's a one that stands out here. Best of the chat here. Uh, let's go back to the good and bad and the ugly here. So we had it's here. So props to Samuel, by the way, who was wearing a Windsor Spitfires hat. I love that old logo. I'll have to show the jersey here in a second because talk about because the Lions also have their new jersey that just rolled out today. So uh, that black jersey is pretty sweet. So from Noah, my ugly is the Erod trade fumble. Michael Bush will would have been probably in a package and also a crazy start. Yeah, he's got like. Like four or five home runs already. He, yeah, he hit five home runs in five straight games. Yeah, which is kind of wild. Mm. So, I do like this comment here from J Bell. We have so single hitters. Uh, by the way, if you own an old jersey, by the way, it's just so weird to see how fan side or fan side fanatics has stumbled that whole thing, and it's still getting worse. Like somebody there, they made a big deal about. Riley Green in his ripped pants, but that was expected <laughs> to happen. Now I'm trying to find the rest of these good and bad and uglies here. I don't know why I'm I'm all start out. Okay, here we go. All right. Another one comment here from Joe. 2014 Sox versus 2019 Tigers. That's a good question. If that's a question, I'm gonna go 2019 Tigers all day. 2019 Tigers, but by not much. I think maybe it's like a it's a it's a game that goes zero zero into the twelfth inning, and then I, just somebody I, wins by like some sort of freak accident. A Vic Reyes heroic moment. I feel like yeah, you, yeah. You didn't you mention not that long ago that, that they started the twenty nineteen Tigers started like relatively well, and then it was just all downhill from there. Yeah, I thought they were like seven and nine or something like that. Sure, I mean, not horrible. Oh. They got a couple of years with Garden Hire. They got off to a decent start. It's just they've, you know, it was all That's facade. Yeah. Checking right hey. now. So through 18 games. The Tigers, by the way, this is the earliest they've won 10 games in a, in the last few seasons or so. The good, by the way, from Joe, Tigers showed some form of life offensively. Bad. Nobody on his team seems to have a clutch gene in their body. Ugly. Torque can't read a pe- uh, pitch to save his life. 
You maybe you know see Doctor Wald, Doctor Yaldo. Maybe he needs <laughs> vision correction. I think so. The so Tigers were were nine and nine through eighteen games in uh, twenty nineteen. Wow. They were right. yeah, they were actually twelve and ten through twenty two games, and then yes, really thirty five and one hundred and four the rest of the way. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's a, a, how many games I watched that year, and why did I do it? <laughs> why? He, why did we do it? I don't know. We did a whole podcast about it for an entire season. For Christ's sake, uh, we we covered that team. Uh, we had yeah. podcasts going back to that part. There's yeah, it's, is John Hicks part of the future? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we actually talked about that. Um, uh, by the way, I love the De- De- Deadly Ninja Bees. I always a creeper reporter talking to Caitlin Clark. That was some Rob Parker shit. Yeah, that was weird. Is that that's, that was that's like Greg Doyle, I think his name is right. He's he's yeah. a Indianapolis star writer. He was always writing weird stuff about um, Michigan too, Michigan football. Well, he's he was, been a weirdo for a while. Mean, you know what? I think it's the same reporter who got in a fight with Tony Larusso when he was the manager of the A's too. That famous like wow. remember that audio I played where Tony yeah, Larusso was like, "I'm a I'm a uh, GD manager of the uh." Yeah. The, anyways, there's yeah. That, I think it's the same guy. Um, the Red Sox traded for Vladimir Gores, who was the pitcher for the Marlins, I believe too. He was a relief pitcher for the Marlins. So, um, yeah, the 2003 comparison, Andrew, I think would be most comparable to this White Sox team. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, that's that's fair. All right. So, that being said, do we have any questions this evening? Uh, you know, I saw one. It was from Deadly Ninja Bees. Uh, so let's see. It was. Uh... Yeah, it's kind of stuff we've already talked about. Uh, Maeda looks like a position player pitching out there. That's not really a question. So, what's your favorite pizza topping? And <laughs> if I gave you ten at bats against Maeda, could you get a hit? I'm 43, and I think I could rip a double. Um, I'm going to say no. Yeah, no, I wouldn't come close to Maeda. Um, <laughs> he would throw me one split, and I would like tear all my abdominal muscles. Yeah. Um, pizza topping? I don't know. I mean, what's wrong well, with ultimate pepperoni pizza topping? And- Pepperoni or uh, I mean, I like I just typically go with pepperoni and bacon. My favorite yeah. pizza is go, go ahead, Uper. You, 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 by the way, I'm jealous of you. You went to the flying tomato this week. Oh, we had the flying tomato from the Wigan yeah, Pen. I, 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 the, the Wigan Pen, by the way, one of the best. If you're ever in Iowa, do yourself a favor and get pizza there. I went there for the Michigan Iowa game. Uper recommended it to me when Uper used to be a, a, a listener of the podcast way many, many moons ago. Yeah, it was one of the best pizza places I've ever had. Go ahead. My, I, I, I love green olives. That's my underrated mm. topping. I mean, obviously, I love any kind of Italian sausage, uh, pepperoni. It's great, but for me, I love that uh, that aftertaste of the green olive. That 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 does it for me. Hmm. That salty dog. Um, I do like a barbecue chicken pizza. I know that's a little bit. Uh, it's not particularly one topping, but uh, I, I find it uh, tasty. I will say, and, and I'm looking at the the 2003 Detroit Tigers through 18 games. They were one and 17. Oh, one and 17. Damn. Ooh. Yeah. Oh boy. In Iowa, besides the one Raj mentioned, the Wigan Pen, which is great, the most popular pizza is actually Casey's Pizza, which is a gas station chain. Hmm. They specialize in pizza as well, <laughs> and they have a thing called a. a the chicken bacon ranch pizza is uh, pretty popular and pretty tasty. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't I, really turn down anything on pizza. I'm not a huge onion guy on anything, so yeah. like I'm not going to go get a like give me some onion pizza or or mushrooms for that matter. But I will eat just about anything on a pizza. Yeah. Before we get, now, as far as hit, I'm sorry, as far as hitting my Ada, I would like to think that when I was 21. And I was playing baseball two games a week and practicing another time per week. And I was in shape that I could have got a foul ball. <laughs> I would like to think I could have I could have worked a foul ball somewhere. But that's about it. I, I, I hold no illusions to hitting a major league fastball. <laughs> no, once I once I got to high school and I stopped playing travel ball, I played stopped playing travel ball my sophomore year in high school and advanced pitching to the point where I was just essentially defensive replacement. When I realized, like, okay, well, I'm just gonna be playing house league the rest of my life, even in in my prime shape, prime shape, cross country shape, when 
I was running 60 miles a week because, you know, because running for fun, couldn't do it. I mean, just it, 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 breaking stuff I always struggled with, but like just a split finger. Are you kidding me? No way. No way. The, the action on split finger is ridiculous. You can't. I just yeah. can't pick up on it. As far as pizza goes, I, if if it's not, I don't really care as long as, I, as I'm with Chris, I don't have onions on it, but my preferred, I know it sounds sacrilegious, is grilled chicken, green peppers, and mushrooms. I don't know why it is. I just like it. I don't really. I think because I'm peppering it out. Because growing up, you had little Caesars in the in the in the big paper bag. You know how they used to have in the like the box in the cardboard thing, and then you rip up the bags and all that. And plus, going to a Catholic school, you eat so much pepperoni pizza. It's kind of like that. So, um, I but, was uh, sorry to just to talk about. You brought up Little Caesars. I was watching um, today with with uh, my son. We were watching, and there was a weird commercial little caesars of course it's weird because it's little caesars it was uh, involving like uh you know those pizza bite things pizza puffs whatever it's supposed to be yeah. really good i haven't had them yet those are, those are those are pretty good and i was explaining to my son that that little caesars has been making weird commercials since i can remember i don't i don't remember them doing normal commercials and so i showed him the one from way back in the day with the with the talking dog that the beastie boys sampled for sure yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's and that's i mean so you're going back that, that album came out in 94 so you're going back at least to the early '90s. Yeah, remember when they they were marketing those uh that weird thing that the 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 plastic container you get that would extend like look like accordion and they made a big deal out of that. You used to get those with the pizzas. Anyway, yeah. um, I did not check out Weedmart's comments about Lostmas, so I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about Brad Osmus. Um, Stamen wants to know how do we get Uber to Comerica this year? We could do a GoFundMe, <laughs> but uh, we could do something like that. That'd be that'd be awesome. Okay, all you got to do is just pay for you to come up here. Uh, uh, they can use, I mean, we right now our funds over at the Tiger Mind Report are a little low. So, um, I did, I did get my um, my shirt today. So, thank you for you that. You get your shirt today. Sweet. My, yeah. All right. You should show Which the one? folks. Oh, your the, the polo. My Tiger. Oh, yeah, you, you, you're next. You, you're, you're next, big guy. You're getting, right. you're getting a polo. You're getting a, no but problem. you're getting a Motor City polo, though. That's perfect. Look so, forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I've never been to Comerica. I'd love to go. I have a niece who lives in the Detroit area, uh, just had their second baby. So I probably will find a way to get there, uh, if not this season, next season. But I'd love to do it this season. Uh, we'll just have to see how the summer goes here. And for those who wonder, I'm a Tigers fan. I've never been to Comerica, right? I went to one game at Tiger Stadium. Uh, living up in the UP, I was a 10-and-a-half-hour ride from Detroit. My dad used to take me to see the Tigers in Milwaukee and occasionally in Minnesota. Uh, but we saw we spent a lot of games uh, seeing the the Brewers Tigers uh, back in the early '80s into the late '80s. So uh, that's why I never made it to Detroit. Just one time in Tiger Stadium. Yeah, we got to change that. We got to definitely change that. We got to make a, a viewer outing at some point too. So I've already met up with some people of Discord, but I haven't really met. I don't think I've met too many people from our YouTube, our regular YouTube folks. So uh, except for. <laughs> Before we get out of here, I just got to tell the story. Uh, last year, we were at South Bend. Chris and I were at South Bend. We got to hang out with a uh, friend of the show, of, or actually more or less of the Tiger Metal Report, Charlie. And Charlie invited us down to South Bend for the weekend. Um, excellent, Josh. We'll, we'll have to put something together. We'll have to, I'll have somebody else coordinate that because I have 100 things going on right now. But so last year, we're at the game, and I, there was this gentleman, an older gentleman. I should forget, remember his name. He came up to me. He was like, "Hey, are you guys Tiger Miley Report? You're, are you Roger and Chris?" And we're like, "Yeah." And you know, it was just kind of sound like because he was very friendly. Like, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of your show, and I listen to all the shows and all that stuff. It was just really cool, but it's also really kind of <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> um, I joke around about this sometimes with a, a couple of people that I talk to. They're like, "Oh, you're uh, you do a podcast, and you know, you're internet famous or whatever." And it's like, no. <laughs> if, if you're if you're a dude in your 50s or somebody who wants to talk baseball that i guess that's makes us famous but it was his energy was really weird because it's just like he was just like so excited i was like i was kind of taking it back because i'm like i'm just i don't know chris i mean i was just i don't know it was just weird like i was like, yeah. like sitting down and talking i love talking baseball anybody was just like he was yeah. really nervous and i i'm I, like i'm i, I it's like the one time i met greg kelser the pistons broadcaster and I'm like, I joined you playing at U of D, knowing full well he played at Michigan State. Or the time I met Alan Trammell, 
and I have all those stats. When I met Alan Trammell, I had all the stats memorized. I go to go to ask him a question, and I couldn't remember the double A affiliate. It's a double A Montgomery Rebels. I have a hat. I have an effing hat back there. I know what team he played for. I know who's in that starting rotation. And then I go to ask some question, and I went, <laughs> that, okay, me, I'm a, you know, 40-something-year-old brown dude. I have nothing to be excited for. I'm just a dude. I'm just a dude who talks baseball, <laughs> and I, I collect Transformers on the side. That is my gig. You shouldn't get that excited as me, me us. But anyway, I digress. No, so, I, yeah. I mean, that, that was, uh, we have the video of that, of you talking to Tram somewhere. I don't know if it's on the YouTube or, or not. I don't know if the, no, the it's, sound. No, it's somewhere in the archives because the audio is so bad. I don't want to. Yeah, it, it just, was, yeah, it was really bad. And I mean, was, shout out to Emily Walden for, no, actually, no, no. Shout out to the Toledo intern who set that up. It was, yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a, a strange day because I was trying my damnedest to get Trammell to say anything about any of the minor leaguers, and he wouldn't. Nope. He was like, "Ah, you know, I haven't seen them lately. I don't really get out of it." And, and like, I was like, "Oh, I've got nothing else to talk to you about." <laughs> so have Raj talk to you, and Raj, you know, had an enjoyable conversation with him, I think. But it was, uh, yeah, it was a weird one. But uh, you know, I had the uh, unique experience the other day of going on a job interview and having the person who was interviewing me know about the minor league site. Wow! Knew, knew about Tigers Minor League Report. Knew Rogelio was like, "Hey, he does videos, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, he used to do like the the stand ups for Woodward, uh, but we do our podcast and stuff." So that was that was interesting. Um, yeah, how'd that come I don't up, know. Right? Like, how'd that come up? Like, did... I you know, he asked me about myself, and I was like, "Well, I've been you know a professional writer for 17 years, and then my department was eliminated, and you know on the side I've been doing all this baseball stuff, and we created a minor league site." And I mentioned the name. He's like, "I know that. I follow you guys on Twitter." <laughs> wow. I was like, like, all right then. That's awesome. That's great. So, yeah, yeah but that that actually also came up really this week in my my day job, and actually secured a media deal that we got today that I'm pretty excited about. But that's nice. story for another day. So, um. Yeah, and one day I hopefully we could get Jed over here. Tigers Jed UK. I love them. He was been talking about coming Didn't over. Did he come over once? I thought he did come he over. He did. I think maybe I don't remember when he did though. If he does come back over again, I would like to take him out on the towel, man. And Jed Tigers Jed UK is one of my favorite Twitter accounts out there because he's just <laughs> the English I mean, he's just so quick on that. So uh we'll be back Sunday to recap the twin series, but next week, next Thursday, I will and also we'll be I'll be doing the minor league report on Monday, but after Thursday next week, I will be in Minnesota. So the guy, these two, and more likely, we'll have a uh, – we're, we're going to have a new host rotating in here too as well. There's a buddy by the name of Mike Papchek, who I've worked oh. with before in the past. You've worked yeah. with Mike Papchek. I remember Mike Papchek. Him from years ago, yeah. Yeah, Papchek's going to be uh, helping us out here. Uh, but speed, hopefully everything's well, – camera will be back at some point too. Just uh, thoughts and prayers. Not, not thoughts and prayers, but just good, send some good vibes to Cameron his way. He's been – uh stealing some stuff so i don't want to get into it because i don't speak his business but just and send some good vibes to cameron please it's good yeah. dude and and i you know i got a very nice note from uh from john's grandparents the other day here. john Klaus yeah, friend, yeah they're really nice they said they were going to keep watching the show so we appreciate that and, and we still think about john yeah. i was thinking about somebody yeah. was uh, complaining about the texas announcers mispronouncing alex fido's name and i was like <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, john used to do that too alex yeah. Fido. Yeah, uh, we're still we're still trying to have a way to like name a segment the Claus effect or something like that. I'm trying to think yeah. of it, but I want to be really I like I don't want to just rush into something the yeah, memorize John. I want to figure out a way to do something nice and class. I mean, it would be the John Claus Studios, but it feel weird because it's you know yeah. I don't know. We'll we'll figure out something. You I bet. Mean, if yeah, it's, for sure. We haven't yeah. forgot by any means. No, of course yeah, not. Yeah, no, no, so. we'll never forget John Claus. John Claus. Yeah, that was a very nice note for his grandparents to send. And so but yeah, hopefully the Tigers can sweep the twins. And continue their winning ways. And we'll be back on Sunday evening for the recap of the Twin Series. And then join us again Monday with Brandon Day for the week four. Holy crap, it's already week four of the minor league. Wow, shit. It's, it's the Cole Turney week. Yeah, Cole Turney, yeah. The he's bonkers. So I think he's got eight hits in the last two games. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, look at that. Uh, Josh Cross with a grand slam, too. I mean, yeah, it's, just, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Steve Butts there uh, with a good call there of Alex Lange. Lange? <laughs> Lange. Was that it? Or? Lange. Yeah. yeah. Listen, we all have our quirks, right? Yeah, we all have our quirks. For myself, Youper, and Chris, we'll talk to Sunday. Have a good rest, good couple days. See you then. I don't know. I was. I always